So in this video we're going to be doing a tutorial over uh, ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Um, so it's going to start off with some uh, covalent or I mean uh, ionic bonds practice. Okay. So the question here is asking us what are the formulas for the ionic compounds formed by the following ions. All right. So in our first example we have calcium and iodide. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is obviously locate calcium on the periodic table. And if you notice, calcium is located, let me put this in green, right here, right? That's where calcium is. Now, um, a neat little trick for you to use on the exams, um, as far as uh, determining the charge of the ion it forms, um, just go ahead and do this. Na label the first group right here as plus one. Label the next group as plus two. The next, all the way here on boron, the next... Uh, uh, one over here, group 13, that's plus 3. And right here on carbon, this is actually plus or minus 4. I'm running out of uh, space here, so plus or minus 4. All right. Uh, nitrogen, negative 3. Oxygen's group, negative 2. The, f the halogens, negative 1. And noble gases are 0. All right. So, um, so we already established that calcium's over here underneath the plus 2 group, right? So let's go ahead and write out calcium. So calcium, 2 plus, right? And iodide, okay? So what's iodide? So the first thing we have to do is look for iodide on the periodic table, right? And we find iodide over here along with the other halogens, right? So um, when you see ide, the, pre the suffix ide, I-D-E, right? Let me write this over here. So I-D-E applies to... Uh, anions. All right, An anions inside bonds. Okay, so for example, we see calcium iodide, lithium nitride, sodium fluoride, magnesium phosphide. Right, so that iod is going to follow us when we do that. Okay, so over here, let's go and write iodide, and you see iodine. It's inside the halogens, which have a charge of negative one. And your professors will explain to you more about why it has that charge and not another. Um, I'll leave that for them to explain. Okay. So let me go ahead and write iodide a little bit closer over here to uh, calcium. So negative one, right? One minus. So when you're doing these uh, these formulas, uh, the trick is to do this: just cross the charges like this, like the following. Okay. So we put the two over here, the negative one over here to cancel them, cancel them out, and we end up with Ca. And the ones right here, right? And then I two, and the two came from the charge of the calcium. The one came from the charge of the iodide, right? But it's it's not um it's irrelevant to write the the one. So let's go ahead and erase that. So this becomes just Ca I two, and that's a formula for calcium iodide. Okay. So let's go on to the next one, lithium and nitride. Well, first of all, we need to find where lithium is. So Get yourself used to at least knowing the general area of the element. It'll save you a lot of time on the exam when you're looking for these, uh, if they ask you uh, to provide the names or formulas for certain uh, bonds or uh, compounds. All right. So lithium, right here with uh, the plus one group, the first group of the periodic table. Right. So it's going to write out lithium plus and nitride, which you can find over here in the 15th group, right? So um, it's going to be N3 minus because of the charge right here, right? So what are we going to do? Same thing again, just cross the charges. And we end up with Li3N, all right? So the whole thing we're doing here is we're just trying to cancel out the charge. It takes three plus uh, ones to cancel out one negative three, right? And that's all we're doing here. All we want to do is get the overall charge to be zero. Okay. So let's see sodium and fluoride. Okay, so where's sodium? Let's look for sodium. It's right here underneath lithium, right? Pretty close to lithium. So it's also going to be a plus one, right? So sodium plus and fluoride. Okay, so where's fluoride? And if you see it's over here near the halogens as well, or inside the halogens, right? So sodium plus one and fluoride negative one. You cross the charges, 
it's a one to one ratio right one plus cancel out one minus so this forms NaF just like that and that's sodium fluoride right let's look at the next one here so magnesium and phosphide okay so let's look for magnesium and as you can see it's right here in the second group with a charge with an ionic charge of neg of plus two so mg two plus and phosphide all right so where's phosphorus it's over here okay and the negative three group in the 15th group of the periodic table all right with a negative three ionic charge okay so p three minus and what you're going to do here is still cross the charges just like we've been doing to give us mg three which came from the charge of the phosphorus and p uh, two which came from the charge of the magnesium right let's look at this last one here okay so barium and sulfide okay so where's barium I'm gonna go to market with market with green just so it stands out alright so barium's right there now where's sulfide you see sulfide sulfur over here in the 16th group of the periodic table known as the chalcogens alright so barium is 2 plus and sulfide is 2 minus right well what do we do here okay so let's cross the charges and logic would tell us so far is that we would write Ba2S2 but in fact this is incorrect because you need to simplify this ratio I guess so y when you do these you have to make sure especially in ionic bonds you have to make sure that they're not divisible by, by one another if you can see over here uh, the imaginary one sorry about that the imaginary one is not divisible by two right the imaginary three is not divisible by one or actually it is but it'll yield the same thing and one is not divisible by three uh, over here on sodium and fluoride the imaginary ones are divisible by each other but they give the same number right so we don't care about those uh, three is not divisible by two over here and two is not divisible by three but if you look over here on barium and sulfide we see that the two is divisible by two right and it'll yield us a different uh, formula right so two over two should be simplified as one right so this goes to become BAS and that's a formula for barium sulfide alright so um, that's something important to make sure that you do on the exam make sure that um, you make sure that they're not divis divisible by one another and if they are you need to simplify that little ratio there all right so let's go ahead and go on to the move on to the molecular compounds covalent compounds uh, name the following covalent compounds all right now here's something that you really need to to take note of so when you have one my pen's not writing sorry um, when you have one it's going to be mono two it's di three it's tri four it's um tetra five is penta six hexa seven hepta eight octa nine nana and ten deca all right and unfortunately I do not have a mnemonic for this um, it's kind of a long uh, long list of letters there uh, but you just have to memorize them alright so just practice with a friend with a family member by yourself uh, however you want to do that um, you will need that for the exam alright so H2O everyone knows that as water right but that's not actually the chemical name of that alright that's just a common name so H2O okay so we see here that there's two of them right two hydrogens so as we see over here, two means di, right? So we're going to put di hydrogen. Now what about this oxygen? There's one, so we put mono, all right? Di hydrogen, mon oxide, all right? So that's an actual name for H2O, okay? So let's see over here is silicon, and then we have an oxygen there, right? So here's the kind of like the interesting part where you're going to say, okay, why does chemistry do this to me? 
Um, but whenever you're talking about the first element right here, so si silicon is um, kind of listed first before oxygen, you do not pl apply that mono rule to the first element, okay? So this is not going to be mono silicon. It's only going to be silicon. So all we're going to write here is silicon, right? And there's two oxygens, so we're going to give it a dye prefix. So silicon dioxide, also similar to carbon dioxide, right? We never say monocarbon dioxide, right? Whenever someone talks about carbon dioxide, they don't say that. Okay, so remember, if there's one of the first element in the in the formula, then you do not give it the monoxide or the mono prefix. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. Um, okay, so we see that there's two phosphoruses here, or phosphori, whatever you say, phosphoruses. Um, so we're going to give it the di prefix. And remember, there's two of these, so we don't exempt it from the prefix rule, right? So we are going to say diphosphorus. And then over here, we see that there's five oxygens. So diphosphorus pentoxide, right? That's a, form, that's a chemical name of that, okay? So let's move on to the next one, N2O, okay? So there's two nitrogens, so what are we going to call it? Di, right? Because two corresponds to di. Let's go ahead and underline that. So, or make an arrow next to that. So di nitrogen. Okay, so now do we exempt this oxygen from the mono rule? No, because it's the second one, all right? We only make that uh, exemption for the elements that are listed first, okay? So uh, that oxygen is going to get that mono pre or mono suffix or mono prefix actually, di nitrogen um, monoxide. All right. So let's look at the next one. Carbon and there's only one of them, so we're not going to say monocarbon. We're just going to say carbon. And then we have four bromines, right? So four corresponds to tetra over here. And so that's gonna give us a carbon tetra bromide. All right, so now the next one. We have SF6, so there's only one sulfur. So are we gonna say monosulfur? No, right? We're just gonna say sulfur with six fluorines. So we're gonna go in and call this sulfur hexa fluoride. All right, so now this last one here. Um, there's four phosphoruses, so we're gonna call it tetraphosphorus. Sorry, misspelled. Tetraphos. Whoa, I don't know how to spell. Okay, so tetraphosphorus. Third time's a charm. Um, and three sulfurs, right? So three corresponds to tri so tetraphosphorus trisulfide all right so some of these might look weird but just as long as you memorize this uh i guess this chart over here then you should be finally the exam all right just pretty much count up the uh, the atoms and remember that exemption that if you have a f uh, element that's listed first you do not give it the mono rule or the mono prefix all right but all other uh, prefix prefixes do apply to it Okay, so don't get that confused on your exam. All right, so in this case, you wouldn't just write phosphorus. You would have to write tetraphosphorus. If you just wrote phosphorus, then people would think, okay, he, he only has, he or she only has uh, one phosphorus there when we actually have four, right? So uh, make sure you don't apply that rule where it shouldn't be applied. Um, and in terms of uh, ionic compounds, if you guys didn't feel like this was enough, then uh, you can pretty much just make your own uh, practice, all right? So, for example, pick out two random elements. So, let's say uh, potassium. Let's see what color do I have. Potassium. Um, let me erase this. So, let's just say we picked out a random potassium, and then we looked over here, and we decided to go with uh, oxygen, right? So, just tell yourself, okay, so what's the formula for that? Um, so, we know that potassium is plus one, right? Oxygen is two minus. Cross the charges. And you should get K2O, right? So now look up on Google, okay, what's the formula for potassium, um, or what's the ionic or whatever, how, however you want to look that up, 
potassium oxide just look at that up potassium oxide and see okay what's the formula for this and test yourself or maybe even go in the reverse direction look up um, give yourself random names like magnesium sulfide or something did we do that over here on this left no we didn't right so magnesium sulfide give yourself random names because this might be the way it's asked um, of you on the exam right so magnesium sulfide so you go to the periodic table on the back of your uh, workbook so you look for magnesium and sulfide look for their charges so mg2 plus and s2 minus right cross them up it becomes mg2 s2 but remember that simplifies down to mgs right and then look it up on google again okay so what's the formula for magnesium sulfide and then just see if you get the correct answer all right so you really don't need any formal worksheet to practice for this stuff just you know pick random elements uh... look it up on google see if you get it right um, and it's that simple you could also apply it to uh, covalent compounds right um, so yeah uh, that's all i have for this video and i hope you enjoyed